Hey, Turtle Power Podcast fans. Uh, this is Ryan. I uh, just wanted to record a short explanation before this uh, episode 9 begins. Um, it's kind of a, a strange episode. If you notice, the timestamp is shorter than what we normally produce. Uh, it's because uh, this episode is going to be just news. Um, uh, essentially, what happened was we never finished <laughs> this episode um uh variety of reasons um but uh you know, holidays weddings uh, various other issues but uh we still wanted to release this uh news only episode uh for you all um look forward to a very special episode 10 at the end of january and uh followed by episode 11 which will return us to our standard format uh show where we'll be able to answer some of your questions uh, discuss our new acquisitions, uh, and I do have some, and uh, of course our character spotlights. So enjoy, and um, if uh, you need to uh, get a hold of us, best ways um, at TMNT Podcast on Twitter or uh, on email, turtlepowerpodcast at gmail.com. Live from the sewers, this is the Turtle Power Podcast. This is your audio source for all the news, reviews, and insight into the world of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now join your hosts, Brian, Alex, and Darby. Bossa Nova. What? Yeah. Bossa Nova. Chevy Nova. Oh. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now it's time for the Turtle Power Podcast. So I know you guys like that new intro, don't you? I'm oh, such a fan of that intro. Love it, love it, such love it. And, and, such and a fan. Jess could totally, totally be April uh, in, in one of the series. She has, like, the voice for April. Like, I, I hear her and I think of April. <laughs> nice. Uh, I will just funny because I have a friend who can pull off the look of April. It's like I look at April and I mm-hmm. see my friend. So there you go. There you yeah. go. Well... Uh, welcome to all of our listeners, all of our new listeners, to uh, another edition, another episode of the Turtle Power Podcast. Uh, as you just heard in the intro, you got me, Ryan, and Darby and Alex here to bring you all of the, the good news and reviews and insight into the world of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So, let's get into the news. April O'Neil, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. News. <laughs> we got the news. Oh, news. by the way, we all have. I guess. I mean, do we all have? Uh, oh, Darby's. You've had a catchphrase, I guess. So, uh, I love how my catchphrase just totally brings down the intro. By the way, that was totally what I was going for when I told you, like, "Hey, this is how the intro should go." That was seriously the effect I was going for on that one. Good job. Thank you. Um, does that mean that Alex and I now have catchphrases based off of the intro? Eh, I mean, look, I, I don't want to say awesome. I, I don't Wait. want awesome. Did you say awesome or whoa, excellent? Whoa, 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 dog pound. <laughs> nice. Um, oh, I'm good. I'm good with mine. With what? What does rap say? What? What, what is that? Bitchin. Yeah, that's right. That was in the original Ninja Turtles movie. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. So were other bad words that I'm pretty sure rap was the only one to say. Damn. Yeah. He says it. He says it like three times in, in the first five minutes of that movie. Damn. Yeah. Like that. And then he, and then he utters, he like whispers it when April takes his sigh away, like as he's closing the lid, the sewer yep. lid. Yeah. You got he it. He says it there too. Um, Mouth so... of the sailor. That one. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, first news item of the, uh, of the episode of the show here, uh, who, 
caught the uh, Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. I did. And, I did. Yeah. Saw the uh, the Nick Turtles float there um, with uh, the the group Neon Trees. Barf. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I don't mind them as much as Alex does. Apparently, I just don't understand why they were on that float. Yeah, Vanilla I should have been on there. Seriously, well, it would have been they, so down with Vanilla. Yeah. Gosh, it was a couple of years ago when they had, uh, where they rickrolled everybody. They had the uh, the guy that you know is in the that video. They actually had him on the float, and they rickrolled everyone that was watching. Um, so that that could have happened. Mm-hmm. I think it was a missed opportunity. So, yeah, but what, you know, what are you going to do? It started with a whisper. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, you know, they're they're just going to stake anybody on there. I, I I can't say that there's any you know modern group that I would. Uh, you know, prefer you know. Yeah, it, it could have been worse. I mean, it could have been like a Bieber or a Taylor Swift or something. Oh like that. God, yeah, no, it could have been far worse. Or like you know, all these new Nick bands that are just awful, just awful. Yeah. So, well, um, it was good to see. Either way, it was good to see the Turtles in the mainstream audience. Um, oh, they're super mainstream. They're everywhere, man. Yeah. They are everywhere. Absolutely. Turtle Mania is back. <laughs> That's a good thing, isn't it? That's a good That's a thing. It's a great thing. Say. Yeah. Um so moving on to news item number 2. Uh and we'll have links to all of these um news articles and items uh in the show notes. Um if your podcast player has the ability, um like I know I use uh Downcast and um uh, if you're listening to the show you can actually, you know, hit the little info um, button. Actually, you don't even have to hit the info button while you're listening to it. You just tap on it or spin it sideways, and it'll bring up all the show notes with all the links and everything like that. So, uh, but there is a new, um, well, relatively new uh, Kevin Eastman interview um, that uh, came out from uh, NBC. Uh, Channel 5 out of Chicago. It's an interview with Kevin Eastman, and he's talking about the uh, the new movie. Okay? And uh, a lot the of it is... Spent two episodes talking about? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you can go back to episodes... Uh, let's see, what was that? Five and six, or six and seven? Um, about uh, our thorough discussion of the... Of the uh, one of the scripts that leaked, anyway. But um, in this interview, he, he talks a little bit about uh, the new movie, and uh, you know, I I can't imagine it's the same script that <laughs> no, <laughs> that they, no you know that we reviewed. But at this point, you you gotta hope that uh, that's been updated. But um, what uh, what he does mention here, which got a lot of attention, um, he says, uh, and I quote here, uh, we're talking about being inspired by movies like The Avengers for scope and Roots origin and The Raid Redemption for fight scenes and Rise of the Apes as far as computer quality style. So... We've known about Rise of the Apes as far as the the facial re, um, replacement technology. It was the same thing that was used in Pirates for mm-hmm. uh, uh, for um, Davy Jones, um, and then the the Raid Redemption. That's a uh, a martial arts movie that's been that, that has been referenced. Uh, but the Avengers uh, that that was a first uh, mention of the Avengers. So. Um, now, uh, personally, I love the Avengers. I th- think you guys did as well, right? Yeah, such a fan of that movie. Right. So, is is this a thing? Can they do that? Could they make the new Turtles movie um, to the point where, as far as scope and roots origin, to be as big as the Avengers? I have difficulty well, believing that with Michael Bay heading the project, but 
Yeah, I mean, Michael Bay doesn't exactly, he's not a big fan of story development or character development from what I've seen. I, I can get the scope he's going for in terms of, you know, spoiler alert, the, the final scene in Avengers, they're battling all of these creatures from another dimension. It sounds a lot like what we talked about in, you know, the script that we read. Mm-hmm. You know, portal to another dimension opens, monsters or creatures come through, everyone has to fend them off, et cetera, et cetera. So it sounds a lot like that. I can understand why that would be a good scope to go for, but as Alex mentioned, Michael Bay. Uh, yeah, that's, 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 all I got accurate. that's about accurate. <laughs> now, um, Eastman did say that uh, in this interview that um, the project has changed significantly since it began three years ago, but said it's heading in an interesting direction. Um, quote here says three years ago, I started working on the John Fusco version, which was this awesome, 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 three awesomes Batman begins kind of take on the first movie. It was really interesting, but it was maybe a little too edgy for what Paramount wanted. It went through a couple of different versions before Michael Bay took it over and brought in Jonathan Liebesman to direct. Okay. So, um, is it really so hard? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is it just really so hard for them to make a Ninja Turtles movie where they're actually mutants and actually brothers and not from an alien planet or alien dimension? Is that so hard? It's not. It's <laughs> it's not hard. It well, seems it, to it be. It shouldn't be. It, it shouldn't be. But I mean, everybody's. In, it, I mean, everything's coming back. You know, things that were popular back in the day, and then being rebooted, and half of the stuff that's coming out is crap. Uh, so you know, that's that's what we're getting now. We're getting we're getting grown ups who are nostalgic from the you know the, from their childhood. They remember all these wonderful things. They want to take it on. They want to redo it, but they want to do it in their own version, and it all sucks so hard. I mean, TMNT, you know, the second best of all the movies we've unanimously agreed, agreed on, like, Shredder wasn't in it, and that and they introduced completely new villains and new characters, and you know what? Didn't stop it from being a great movie. They were mutants. They were yeah. brothers, not and aliens. That, and in that one, I kind of They're, feel like they, they went for that darker Batman Begins kind of, you know, edgy feeling. And it went well. Yeah. Right. Well, there's some elements that you can't change or shouldn't change. That's one of them. You know, they're they're teenage mutant ninja turtles. They're not aliens. I mean, you're you're basically creating your a whole new story, a whole new. I mean, I can it, understand them not being teenagers anymore because they grow up eventually, obviously. Oh. But they're mutants. That's the thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. <sighs> What are you gonna do? I mean, well, I just got to keep in, <laughs> keep waiting to uh, to see what uh, they come up with. Uh, I wonder when they're gonna, as far as you know, um, discuss you know what this movie is gonna. They're gonna have some sort of you know, Comic Con type, um, you know. Uh, <laughs> I think they're afraid to. <laughs> well, we've seen uh, a couple of their. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, Comic Con. There's like crazy nerd rage at Comic Con, man. Absolutely. They were crazy, um, especially Michael Bay, who's already butchered the childhood of lots of people out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so we'll see. Uh, next news story: um, We've uh, got our first look at the the second wave of toys. Um, I guess this would be considered under our collecting uh, portion of the show. Um, uh, the website toynews.com has got a bunch of pictures of the uh, of all the new uh, Turtles uh, action figures and vehicles that are going to be out. Um, I like <laughs> that... Uh, the uh, little go karts. <laughs> go karts are cool. My from, favorite. Take them on, did it? <laughs> no, no. Which no, no. I mean, you know, the, the, the you can tell this. A lot of this stuff has been in the works for a while. So, um, even though Panic in the Sewers was uh, early to middle of the first season, they you know 
Playmates has known about this for a while, so they've, they, I'm sure they've seen at least, if not finalized version of these episodes, then um, at least, you know, conceptual versions of all of season one and probably into season two already, so. The most exciting thing of all this is the Legos, uh, Legos TMNT set. It is amazing. Amazing. Legos. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Legos, is losing, Legos is losing me as a fan. I mean, I, I, I keep, I mean, my nephews, uh, you know, it's Christmas time. My nephews are really into Star Wars and they're, I'm, I'm actually trying to turn them onto the turtles. But, you know, I remember I saw a commercial for like this Star Wars Lego set and I was like, oh, that'd be a great present to get them. And it was a hundred bucks for the Lego set. Uh, I'm, dude. Well, Legos no. are always expensive. It's just, yeah, but that expensive? I mean, everything is more expensive now. I mean, but you like, can always, you, can always get a, you can always get a Mega Blocks. No, I've already got them all four of the turtles, so I'm good. Go. I got them all four of the turtles, so I'm happy for that. Nice. I'm actually quite proud of that accomplishment, considering I keep reading all these stories online of people having trouble finding certain turtles. Well, it's all that I think is just regionalized. Um, for you know one story comes out says you know some 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 you know jackhole in in western oklahoma goes whoa, to whoa, whoa. And... there goes our western oklahoma audience right there <laughs> That goes to the panhandle. That's the panhandle. That's the trailer hitch, man. What the heck? He goes to one (laughs) Toys R Us and can't find, uh, can't find, you know, something, and you know, puts it online and says, you know, oh, they're, you know, they're running out of stock. The same thing happened the Wii U. Uh, Initial things were coming out saying that the Wii U was, uh, you know, running out of a couple places. But the Wii U thing, that's all. That's all. That's all on purpose, man. Like. It, there's only fifty dollar difference between the thirty two gig and the eight gig, you know. So eventually they're gonna drop the eight gig down, you know, another fifty dollars. So it's a hundred dollar difference where it should be. But they're, you know, they're 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 profiting like crazy on that eight gig right now because people are just buying it at two fifty or through three two fifty three hundred. Right. But there's still plenty of stock out there though. That's what I'm saying is that there's there was a couple areas where they were running low, and yeah. then Western, they just assumed Western that Oklahoma. it was everywhere, but. So. All I know is walked into a Target, found all four turtles at once. I'm just going to point this out. Don- I got the last Donnie. There were plenty of Leos and Raps and Mikeys, but I got the last <laughs> Donnie. Nice. Um, I, yeah. and, and this is when I realized what a horrible person I am. They had Splinter, who I don't have yet. This is for my nephews, who I'm trying to turn in, turn on to the turtles. And, you know, Aiden is seven and Bodie's four. And I'm literally looking at this Splinter figure and being like, man. I want to buy this. And I was wanting to buy it for myself and not my nephews. And I was like, oh, really? Really, man? All right. right. Put it back before I You're going to enjoy Splinter yeah. a lot more than they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. But you know, it's, you know, it's the time of year where I should probably be thinking about my nephews instead of me, man. Uh, oh, that's true. Uh, you know, um, well, I, maybe once Christmas is done, I'm going to feel less bad about that. But as of right now. Uh, interesting uh, notes about this this uh, um, on this website with all of these uh, turtle uh, figures is that uh, the fish face figure, which is already out in stores, uh, shows which now based off of we just watched uh, uh, Mouse Mouser's attack, attack um, just this morning, and uh, they talk about how fish face has no legs. He's and bitch. how he's stuck in the water. Right. Well, you look right. at the action figure and you go, oh, that's how the <laughs> – that's what they're going to do. Right. So you know exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. Sucks, well, so they also like... – they show him for a split second in the theme song too, in the intro. Yeah. That's true. He's yeah. standing next to Shredder for like a split second. Hey, when are we going to get the uh, the new uh, – But wait, wait, wait. I actually want to talk about that because I was thinking about this a couple days ago. Um. You know, why Why did Bradford and why did Zebber mutate into the animals that they mutated in? That was the uh, – that was on the episode where they mutated. They, it was the two things. I know. They, yeah. The gauntlet, right? Yeah. Bradford was bitten by a dog and Zebber played with a fish. So they turned into those respective creatures, right? Yeah. yeah. 
Those weren't the last animals they touched. It should have been the turtles? I think so. Turtles were mm. the last animals that they touched. Yeah, you got a point. I mean, I guess that's an argument. That's, that's, you can make an argument for that, I guess. Yeah. That's me nitpicking and just, well, see, they didn't catch the turtle, you know, that. But I was just <laughs> like, well, you know, I mean, spider bites turned into a spider because there was a spider attached to his phone. Snake weed fell on the ground that was covered in weeds when the mutagen hit him. So I understood why they turned into that. But, you know, the last things ever in Bradford Touch were the turtles. Yeah. This is food for thought there. Fair enough. Um, they've, uh, they've got, uh, I mean, we'll, we'll, like I said, we'll put the, the article up here so you'll be able to check it out yourself. But they've got uh, the turtle, or the shell, no, what did he call it? The T cell? The T phone. T phone. T phone. The shell cell was from the 2K3 series. And, but the. It's just called turtle comps. That's what they are. Yeah. <laughs> They're turtle comps. And that's what Although they I call like the it on here, the turtle comps. So. I, I like the feature that Donnie added to it by having them self destruct. Self destruct, yeah. That's cool. <laughs> that was pretty sweet. Um, Don, the, uh, Don is pretty amazing, you know. He's yeah, although he awesome. can be he can be very creative with the with the command sequence for that. That was pretty ingenious. Turtle I'm sorry, I missed the part where it was supposed to be hard to get your phone to self destruct to cover up information that you didn't want people to. I forgot the well, part where that was supposed to be difficult to blow your phone up. Well, I mean, it shouldn't it shouldn't be difficult, but I mean, the phrase it, "turtle phone self destruct" that's kind T-phone, of phone, not turtle phone. T-phone, T-phone. Sorry. That's what it stands for. Whatever. Just saying. Whatever, G- dude. GFY. <laughs> he probably said self-destruct. <laughs> he probably didn't think Mikey would even come up with the word destruct in his head. He'd probably say blow up. Why not? He has, a, char- he has a, char- a flow chart for everything. He should have figured that was going to happen. Yeah, well. He did figure it was going to happen. He just, you know, whatever. He, did, he figured it was going to happen. That's why he put the feature in there. Right. I need well, to drink something. How are you guys? Uh, in addition to uh, the second uh, series, um, the first series is now available in the UK. So that's good to any and all of our UK listeners. <laughs> hey, I know we have at least two because I have friends in Manchester who are really awesome people that should be listening to us. By Outstanding. Now. All right. Shout out to Chris and Allison from Manchester. We're from nice. Liverpool, so they're Liverpool fans. Don't know how they survive. <laughs> um, and uh, finally, in the last uh, segment in our collecting uh, section here, uh, for uh, who likes Happy Meals? I, I do now. <laughs> yeah. Um, the uh, TMNT are returning to uh, McDonald's Happy Meals. And uh, I believe... Back uh, starting in like January, maybe um, is when they're gonna show up. It's they're yeah, gonna it's have for January. Uh, yeah eight figures. It'll be the boy version of the of the toy. Um, they're gonna have the four turtles on like little pedestals, uh, and then they're gonna have the four turtles each in a motorcycle type thing. So yeah. um, I would see when the. And Darby, you and I were living together at this point when the TMNT movie came out and the TMNT figures were at McDonald's. So, uh, uh, and I still have those. I still have those. I got, They're, I think I they had the same thing. I got such a good in at McDonald's so I can just grab those oh, toys. Yeah, it was out. bad. It was bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's for my kid. <laughs> that I don't have. Yeah. So anyway, uh moving on to our uh collect or no, out of our collecting section and into our comic section. Uh Well, for collecting, for collecting, I did get a new item, you oh, know, new acquisition, new acquisition as you will. First I want to ask Ryan, did you ever check out that Wreck-It Raft shirt that I showed you? Yes. Did I you did. actually get it or you just thought appreciated it and moved on? Uh, option two. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Fair enough. I really didn't expect you to get it. I just thought you'd want to see it. That company ripped apparel. I actually got a shirt from them. Uh, oh, cool. I saw a link for it on Reddit. Uh, it was a. Uh, took me to ripped apparel, and it was 
The shirt was called The Don. And it's pretty much a black and white drawing of Donatello with his purple bandana. And he looks like a Don of a mafia, like, you know, the, the godfather. Yeah. He's even he's even got like a pet turtle in his hand. And the only color in it is his purple bandana. And he's got like a pin of a turtle that's also purple. So did you make them an Don. offer they couldn't refuse? Huh? Oh and no! For ten, bucks, no. for ten bucks, I couldn't refuse it. Stop! <laughs> nah. no longer allowed to make puns on this show. No, no, you get nothing for that. <laughs> you get tripping. GFY. Uh, nice. Stop uh, trying to stop that, Alex. Why not? <laughs> hey, it was it was it, it, no not, not one you. person not one person came up with that. Okay, it was a community affair. Sadly, yes, which actually kind of makes me ashamed to be a part of that. But <laughs> <laughs> it took more than one uh, person to come up with that. It's an inside joke there. Um, so, uh, in the comics, uh, we've got uh, IDW 16 is out now. And Darby, is that the one you were just reading? Uh, yeah, I'm currently reading that one. Cool. But I last left off... I mean, is it a spoiler if I say where I last left off? Um, okay, so, spoiler alert, uh, go ahead, uh, um, I guess 30 seconds. Mark. Uh, where I last left off in the series, the Turtles were fighting Slash in what is to be their new home that they're looking for. And Donatello thinks they should dispatch of Spike one way, and Michelangelo thinks they should dispatch of Spike a different way. And this is while they're fighting Spike, so they're trying to figure out what to do with him. That is all I've gotten up to right now. Wow. So, Interesting. Yeah. And that's uh, 30 seconds. Okay, good. So, that's how Donnie and Mikey are the ones coming up with the plans and not well, the quote-unquote A-team. All right, yeah. Well, that's ba- – yes, A-team, B-team. Alex, did you think that that was pretty accurate? No, absolutely. Yeah, I thought so too. Okay, just want to make sure. I think you both should just <laughs> booyak shy yourselves right there. <laughs> oh, I thought we had him. Hey, hey, we had happened? Him. what happened first? What happened first? Did they say, oh my god, we have to get Donnie, or oh my god, we have to get Leo no, and I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure what happened first is they sparred and, and Leo and Raph completely destroyed him. Uh, I'm pretty sure that happened first. Yeah, but who came up with the way to save the day? Donnie. No, I mean, he has to be good for something, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, def- yeah. So, I mean, all the problems that they have. Okay. It's definitely, it's definitely not fighting, so he might as well do something behind a desk. That's where he's best at. It's in, it's okay. in the field, man. I will, I, will, I will say this. Donnie definitely, you know, proved his Donnie, worth, I, I guess, like, for Donnie lack of a better term. Far every week now. Like, the last episode or, like, two episodes ago, I said Raph was becoming my favorite. No, nah, it's definitely Donnie now. He's just – he's owning it. Okay, so here's here's the thing, is that they you know the A team, B team, whatever. Uh, Donnie definitely you know helped out the B team, brought them up to the A minus team. What did Mike do? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, I mean, I, he is voiced by the guy who thinks he's the biggest turtle fan. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, IDW uh, issue 17 is scheduled for release on December 12th. Uh, additional releases include um, the Mirage Color Classics, um, Michelangelo. The uh, Michelangelo number one is out now in color. Um, this is, uh, like I said, this is based off of the, the original uh, Mirage series uh, that IDW has colored in and is now re-releasing. Um, so right now, Raph and Mike, number ones, and then issues one through six have all been released. And um, uh, definitely check out the uh, TMNT app um, for the most up-to-date list uh, of all the available uh, TMNT comics. Oh, and then one very quick uh, note is that uh, the uh, IDW is going to be releasing another series um, similar to, uh, you know, how the um, the adventures, 
comics that were out in the late 80s and early 90s that was more based on the animated series. Um, IDW is doing a, a similar thing where they're releasing an animated series of comics that are based on the Nickelodeon series, and that's going to be scheduled to debut in February. Um, into television, we've <laughs> got uh, some big news. <laughs> Um, uh, it's, Next it's Mutation funny. Volume 2 is now out on DVD. <clears throat> and uh, Alex, you had a little story. <laughs> Alex, you had a little story about uh, that, didn't you? I did. I did. I was at Target today. Um, which, by the way, I picked up uh, uh, the uh, the smaller figure of, of Leo while I was there. And uh, I got some uh, uh, TMNT uh, boxers, which I'm very excited about. But, um, oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I bet I, his fiance is looking forward to those. Hey, well, wedding night, that those are going to be the ones I'm going to be wearing. <laughs> um, yes. That's my boy. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm like, all right. So I knew the next mutation, uh, you know, volume two was out on DVD. So I figured I'd, you know, take a look and see how many were still left. And um, there all was, of them. Nope. There was but one left. That's the only one they ordered. But uh, that's, that's what I assumed. Uh, but there was but one left. And, uh, it, no, it, it looked pretty empty around it. I'm pretty sure people bought it. Uh, no, I think they bought the ones, or, like the movies that were around it. <laughs> no. Uh, well, me and Ryan were talking about it. He made a good point. It was probably the the, the Power Ranger fans that bought it because I can't, I can't think of any Turtle fan that would actually go out and spend $10 on the next mutation. Well, Anything the, to do. There are completists God, they should, out they there that just want to have $10 everything. to buy it. There are completists out there that would just want to have it just to have it, and whether they watch yeah. it or not. I mean, that's a different thing. There's not that many, though. I mean, I have to, I have to think they at least had five on the shelf. Yeah, you can't just order one. Yeah, <laughs> one copy of. So. They at least had five on the shelf, and there was only one left. Yeah, I, I, I was holding it, and it was, it was, it was a, such a pitiful image that looked like that Indian, you know, in that old commercials, like you know, where the guy <laughs> litters and he grabs up the piece of litter and he starts crying. That's what I look like holding this next mutation DVD. <laughs> Sorry, oh. such a great image. Well, oh man, uh, yeah. As, as Alex mentioned, the the uh, Power Ranger Turtle crossover. I believe those uh, episodes are included in this. So, um, yeah, who knows? Yeah, it's it's not for us, but it's you know, we're not saying that uh, it wasn't, wasn't for that many people it. apparently because it only did you know it was only good for one season so. You, you know, it could also be just the the impulse buy. You know, where you know you see, um, it, you know, it, it a mom's the there and says, "Oh, my parents. my kids are watching Ninja Turtles. I'll get this <laughs> DVD for them." And then they bring it home and realize, "Oh my god!" If if, if, that, if that's going to be a Christmas <laughs> gift for any child, I feel sorry for that. It's for the naughty child, you know. <laughs> Don't rub a pole. Here you go, Ninja Turtles Next Mutation. Oh goodness. I think if any parent did sit down and watch it with them, it'd be like the end of uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark where their faces just start to melt. And... <laughs> Very good. Just like that. Right there. Close That's your true. eyes. Don't look no matter what you hear. About right. Well, um, in addition to uh, that great bit of television news, um, we do have some, some, I guess, exciting news. For the new Nick Turtles series, uh, they've been nominated for three Annie Awards. It's the uh, Animation Awards. Um, the uh, they've been uh, nominated for uh, Best Directing in an Animated Television or Broadcast Production um, for uh, Never Say Zephyr. Um, best storyboarding in an animated television or broadcast production for, I think his name is Baxter Stockman, and best voice acting in an animated television or broadcast production, and that's actually for Mae Whitman as April O'Neil. Um, yep, Katara, episode, baby. Uh, Rise of the Turtles, yeah. Um, yeah, it was uh, impressive. Or the lesbian chick from Scott Pilgrim, if you want to think of her that way. <laughs> nope, Katara. That's that's what got me excited when I read about the characters and who was going to voice them. When they said Mae Whitman, who was Katara, I was like, ah, oh, so happy. Well, there you go. So that's good. You know, it's good. Uh, you always like to see, you know, um, the hard work getting paid off. So yeah. I think Ron she... Paulson got gypped on that nomination. I'm just saying. Well, well she does a great job. Yeah. 
She does a great job, but come on. I, I know I know I'm being biased, but isn't Ron Paulson like the best voice actor on that show? Uh he's certainly the yeah. the most experienced. And he's no most decorated, I mean, with, with what he's done. But yeah, I, I, I guess I, I can I guess. I don't know. She deserved it though. I can't take anything away from her. Yeah. Um so uh this is an interesting story that uh, hit the web. Um, Corey Feldman, uh, who, uh, at least for the majority of his turtle career, has been known for voicing the the uh, the turtle of Donatello. And Boss in, Nova! <laughs> in both uh, the first and third um, of the uh, the movies. Uh, has said in an interview with, um, let's see, Seattle PI, um, and we'll have, again, we'll have a link to this, but, uh, uh, he's essentially, uh, this, the article is, is really more just talking about the fact that, um, because he was in the Goonies and Sean Astin were in the Goonies, then they're now having a Goonies reunion. And that Goonies reunion is taking place in the new Ninja Turtle series. Um, he's going to be voicing an act, uh, a character in the second season. And we don't know who, um, but um, it's uh, interesting. Uh, a lot of speculation on who he's going to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, um, what did you – you had a theory, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, the the popular go-to choice, lots of people seem to say it, because the only clue is that he's going to rock Raphael's world. That seems to be the only clue they're giving. A lot of people, like the go-to one is Casey Jones. A lot of people seem to think he's going to be Casey Jones. Hmm. Personally, I can see him being Spike. I mean, we we all said at the beginning, like, maybe Spike will get mutated, because obviously there's a Spike turtle that gets mutated. Raphael has a pet turtle named Spike. And there's just something about the stupid look that Spike always has on his face that leads me to believe that Corey Feldman is going to voice him. <laughs> wow. Well, I, can, I can't argue against that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll see. Uh, it's interesting that they're bringing uh, him back. Um you know, into the Turtles universe. What, whatever the case, I mean, I think we can all agree this is one of the most impressive voice acting crews ever in, in an animated series. I mean, this is all very impressive. Even though you don't like the guy who's voicing your turtle? Right. But you, 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 nevertheless, I mean, it's still a big name. I mean, there's a lot of big names in this series. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I still think my turtle got the best one, but, you know. Well, I, I agree with that. I, I, agree <laughs> with, I, I agree with that. One. Look, Biggs has gotten better, though, as the series has progressed. Oh, he has. I, I've liked Leo a lot better as it has progressed. I like him a lot. So I understand that. He's growing on me. He's he's definitely growing on me. Told you he would. Yeah, he did. There you go. And that's going to do it for this abbreviated edition of the Turtle Power Podcast. But uh, we're going to leave you with a uh, our song of the of the show uh, as as a clue for what our next episode is going to be all about. So thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next time.
the final, the final, the final.